Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies. And today it is Lunar New Year. Yay! Even though it is only January 31st here in the USA, but in Hong Kong and the rest of East Asia, it is already February 1st, so it is technically already Lunar New Year, so yay, I'll be celebrating alone today. So, anyways, today I'll be doing another episode of a movie roundup where I talk about movies I watched in the last couple of weeks. First off, we have The Power of the Dog, directed by Jane Campion and based on a novel by Thomas Savage. So, The Power of the Dog is a neo-western movie released last year that had gotten a lot of attention and Oscar buzz. It is very nuanced, it is very subtle and novel-like, and I also made a full-length review on it, so check that one out. But overall, I think this is a really solid movie that is totally Oscar-worthy. The performances by Benedict Cumberbatch, Kirsten Dunst, and Cody Smith-McPhee are fantastic. The dialogues can get kind of confusing and weird at times, but in my opinion, it's just kind of the style of the movie. It's just, it just makes the Western feel more Western for some reason. Also, on top of that, Johnny Greenwood's score, mwah, exquisite, absolutely amazing. And it's kind of funny that I watched two movies back to back, Spencer and The Power of the Dog, and both of them are also scored by Johnny Greenwood in the same year. So uh, Johnny Greenwood, get that Oscar. Come on, man, you can do it. 8 out of 10. Alright, up next, I watched Ying Xiong or Hero, directed by Zhang Yimo. It is a 2002 Chinese martial arts film that also involves actors and crew members from Hong Kong and uh, also Taiwan, I believe. Anyways, Ying Xiong or Hero is on my watch list for a very long time, and after living in Los Angeles for like three weeks, let me tell you, I thirst for Chinese culture. But uh, yeah, even if I hadn't arrived in LA, I would still watch this movie eventually. And I also did a full-length review on it. Check it out. Anyways, Hero is a fantastic movie. It is one of the most visually stunning films I've ever seen in my whole life. Every single shot is beautiful. Zhang Yimou has a tendency to pick one color and just a Abuse the hell out of it in everything. The landscape, the clothes, the architecture, the sets. It is honestly amazing. Just watching this film is eye candy. That being said though, the characters and the stories are not really that compelling. But that is not really an issue for me. I see in a lot of reviews that this is an issue for a lot of people. But to me, it is not an issue at all. Because this movie isn't meant to be realistic in the first place. Clearly, this movie is heavily inspired by classic martial arts novels. As well as being an homage to Qi Hak Li Jun. Which is one of the most important pieces of literature in Chinese history. A.K.A. A, an anthology of biographies regarding assassins. Also, Tony Leung and Maggie Jung are in this movie and they're both fantastic. If you are observant and if you know Cantonese, there's even a moment in the film where you can hear Tony Leung and Maggie Jung speak a little Cantonese. So uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. Strong 8 out of 10. And then I continued my streak of Hong Kong movie reviews with uh, The Private Eyes or Bun Gan Bat Leung by Michael Ho, and uh, I'm not going to talk about it now because in the future, in about a few weeks, I will be making a separate video talking about the Hong Kong movies I watched. But um, yeah, it's a really great one. 8 out of 10, it's an awesome, iconic comedy, what can I say? Afterwards, I watched Song Ga Wong Tiu, or The Song Sisters, directed by Mabel Zheng. And it is a movie from 1997. And, uh, yeah, this movie is kind of disappointing. It's a period drama, but it feels more like a Wikipedia page. That is also kind of cartoonish. 6 out of 10. Anyways, afterwards, I watched Mommy, a movie from 2014, written and directed by Xavier Dolan, or if you would like to pronounce it in another way, Xavier Dolan. Anyways, Mommy is a fantastic movie. It is a very realistic take on the problematic child subgenre. Even though I don't speak Quebecois French, I think the dialogues feel really, really natural and realistic. The editing of this film is surprisingly great. There are a lot of cool montages that are extremely well edited and even Scenes that are not montages are all really, really well edited. The one-to-one -one aspect ratio is really refreshing, and whenever the film breaks this aspect ratio, it's always broken with a lot of reason. Also, if you had told me that 
there would be a very serious drama film that has the songs Wonder Wall by Oasis and Born to Die by Lana Del Rey, I would probably laugh at you. Until I watch Mommy. What a great movie. 9 out of 10. Afterwards, I watched Kamera wo Tomeru Na, or One Cut of the Dead, a Japanese movie from 2017, directed and written by Ueda Shinichiro. And without spoiling anything about this movie, it is one of the most fun and unique and innovative movies I've ever seen. It is incredibly rewatchable, it is fantastic. And the story is kind of unconventional, yet it is very accessible, very fun, and this movie made me fall in love with filmmaking all over again. Again, it is impossible to talk about this movie without talking about the spoilers, so go watch my full-length movie review on this movie on my channel. Afterwards, I watched Election by Alexander Payne, a movie from 1999. A year ago, or actually half a year ago, when I had lunch with Natalie and Mr. P, I told Mr. P that I wanted to write and direct a short film about my secondary school life. And to that response, Mr. P recommended this movie to me, Election. And I finally watched it, and you know what? I kinda like it. If you have watched this YouTube channel for a long time, you would know that I am very critical of teen dramas and secondary school slash high school dramas because they're usually very inaccurate, very poorly written, and honestly, a lot of them are just misses for me. I have high standards when it comes to teen dramas. And in my opinion, Election didn't exactly pan out just like I would have wanted it to, but that being said though, it is still very, very enjoyable. It is a very fun black comedy with cool editing and cool performances by Matthew Broderick, as well as Reese Witherspoon, and there are a lot of things about this movie that I just cannot relate to at all. There are a lot of Americanisms in this movie. You know, the good girl stereotype, jocks, problematic teachers, and teen sex, all of these things I cannot relate to at all. But that's totally fine. It's a black comedy. Who fucking cares? 8 out of 10. Afterwards, I watched Gengzhakusi, or Police Story, which is a movie starring Jackie Chan, also directed by Jackie Chan. It is an iconic action movie from Hong Kong from the year 1985, and I really like it. Anyways, afterwards, I watched Oh god, how do I pronounce this? Ivanovo Dietz... Ivanova Dietzva. Uh, I, I can't I, I can't speak Russian, leave me alone. But this movie is Ivan's Childhood, written and directed by Andrei Tarkovsky, and it is from the year 1962. Now, I um, I'm going to have to do some explaining here. For the longest time, Stalker and Mirror have been on my watch list, but I've never watched them. Why? Because I was afraid. I've heard all sorts of things about these films. They're super slow paced, abstract, weird, and someone like me would probably not be able to appreciate it. So you know what? The best way to start off Tarkovsky's filmography is to start from the very beginning with his first feature film, Ivan's Childhood, which is, uh, yeah. Unsurprisingly, it is a very slow-paced movie, and it is somewhat confusing still. In the middle parts of the movie, I legitimately almost fell asleep. Well, to be fair, I was very sleepy that day. But that being said though, the shots are very, very beautiful. And the last part of the movie is very eerie and devastating, and, in it, and it is a very tragic look into war. Also, it is important to note that before the 1960s, a lot of Soviet films were pro-war, but after uh, Khrushchev's Thaw, I think it's called, there had been more anti-war films, and this is one of the first few. So the way this film captures war and, and sort of tells a story of tragedy relating to war is honestly kind of historical. I also think the performances are pretty great. There's a 12-year-old kid in this movie who acts like a 30-year-old, so there's that. Strong 7 to a light, 8 out of 10. Finally, I watched Persona, written and directed by Ingmar Bergman, a Swedish film from 1966. I watched it last night, and oh my god, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I did a full-length movie review on it earlier today, so check that one out. But um, I have six words. What the fuck is going on? I literally don't understand anything in this film, and I'm usually the type of person 
who is resilient towards abstract, confusing, experimental films and TV shows and animes, but this, this is just next level. And considering that this movie came out in 1966, it's absolutely mind-blowing. And don't get me wrong, the editing, the cinematography, the blocking, the lighting, the music, and the acting are all top-notch. They're all fantastic. But there's just something about the plot, the structure, and, and the story of this film that just really, really confused me. It's not that I don't like it, it's just that I feel like I haven't been able to fully appreciate this film enough until I have rewatched this maybe two more times or three more times. It is incredibly psychologically damaging, and um, I really don't know what to say about this film. It's clear that this film has heavy influences on future directors like David Lynch, Robert Altman, and Lars von Trier, and and you know uh, Perfect Blue and Black Swan and The Lighthouse, and that is fantastic. But nonetheless, I will have to rewatch Persona a few more times in order to really fully appreciate it. But for now, I'm just gonna say not applicable. I'm just gonna add some question marks and uh, uh, yeah, whatever. So, have you seen these films? From 1 to 10, how much you rate them? Like, if you like them, subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. I have to go now. I need to go to college now. Bye-bye.